So, Francesco, thank you very much for the introduction. It's a challenge now to keep you awake after the last lecture, so I'll do my best. And our subject, so I'm Emilio, and our subject now is customizing cross-linking with the CI device. Well, uh, I perform cataract surgery in different scenarios. So that's the Amazon forest, uh, Brazil, uh, and that's the Swiss Alps. And those are different scenarios I'm faced with by, by doing cataract surgery. And when we look at the surgeries and the cataract that we find on those places, of course, we have to change our technique. So those on the left, you see a cataract uh, that I did in December last year when I was there for the last time. And it was uh, packs with a subluxated crystalline and very hard nucleus. So for all of you, it's clear that we cannot use the same technique as we would use for the right image, so a cortical, very soft cataract. So that's very clear for all of us. And it's very clear then that adapting the technique of the cataract surgery is uh, necessary. So one size does not fit all. So that's on cataract and that's very soli solidified. So we all think the same, but when we go to keratoconus, uh, so that's the Dresden protocol. It was published in 19, uh, this first article, 1997. And in some countries like USA, for example, the FDA approved this method just in 2016. And still nowadays, uh, one size fit all. So they use the same technique for all the patients. So, uh, and that was about two, uh, 25 years ago. So I'm glad to be part of Hafez's group and which over the years has published a uh, amount of cross-linking liter literature or papers. And in all this time, much has been learned about how cross-linking works. And what have, you, uh, what have we learned? So that's how we do nowadays for every single patient, the same the same form that Dan was showing that for every single patient he sees all the maps for every single patient, we also adapt our cross-linking technique according to, for example, risk factors on how fast the disease is progressing. So for cross-linking, we should apply the same rule as I applied and I mentioned in cataract surgery. So one size does not fit all as well. And that's why uh, I, I'm showing here recent advances where cross-linking can be customized case by case, so in an individual basis, and that we can do uh, with the CI device. And this can, this can be done whether in the laying down position, lying down position, or also at uh, this lit lamp here are some images in both situations where you can see. And the setup for, for, for the slit lamp is very easy and straightforward. We just place this over uh, this lit lamp. So now, I will focus from now on on some advanced, advances and some paradigms, some, something that we, a few years ago, could not change that would be possible. So the first point is about think awareness. So this paper we've published uh, in 2021, if I'm not wrong, the American Journal, and from then on, we now are able to treat corners below 400 micro. So that's not a contraindication for us anymore. So the results you might have seen after a year, we saw a flattening of about two diopters, which was uh, great and comparable with uh, what we would expect with Dresden protocol, which was amazing. We would not expect that the first stage is such a great result as we achieved. And, how he, and here you can see how uh, it was already integrated on the CI device, so you can easily put the pachymetry or the thinnest pachymetry on, uh, of the patient, and then the device itself calibrates and adjusts the energy that should be used for each individual corner, uh, in those cases below 400 micra. So here is a MS-39 image of a very advanced cornea. And for 
most of, uh, or before we would not imagine, or, or that was a contraindication for crosslink. And if you see, the stromal thickness in this case was about 130 micra. And I'm not sure if you have seen, but this, the, uh, of course there is a variation, but the keratometry 110 micra. So with this patient, we did the sub-400 protocol using the CI device, and with the scleral lenses, of course, we have to rehabilitate those patients. He reached the vision 2020 or, 120, or even better, 125. So it is possible to treat thin corneas, and from this point, so also a new indication could be made that the cross-linking for keratoglobulins, and we see here uh, the cases. A second point, or a second technique I would like to mention is about a new AP off cross-linking method. So since last year, we could identify uh, for the first time a uh, AP off protocol as effective as Dresden, but much faster. So it would, instead of 30 minutes, we could reach the same stiffening effect at uh, only nine minutes and 15 seconds as I said, maintaining the same biomechanical strain. So th this was published, I think, last year. And uh, after our clinical study is finished now, probably the end of this year, this will be also integrated into the CI device. So with high fluence, we can treat like Dresden, but much faster. A third technique. Now, AP on, does it work? So a few years ago, we knew or we discovered that the oxygen is essential for every single procedure. And here you can see that without oxygen, we don't have any reaction. But then on the next year, we also understood more how the oxygen play a role in all of these uh, settings that we usually see. So the radiation time has something with oxygen to do Fluence, so all of those factors influence the oxygen availability in this trauma. And that's why on the first studies of Epion, we could not see nice results or the failures were high, up to 30% in some cases. So since 2019, uh, with some help for oxygen improvement, such as oxygen boosts or iontophoresis, it is uh, a reality and it is possible to do Epion with uh, short term follow up. Good results, that's what have been published so far. And this was only possible because that was uh, Cosimo Mazotta here from Italy. At first, an intelligent combi uh, a combination that would compensate for the oxygen would uh, use it, so it was used. And he combined iontophoresis with all those settings, slow fluence, uh, slow, uh, slower time, sorry, and higher fluence. And that could be achieved with normal air without any oxygen boost. Uh, so that was Cosimo, and then the idea to make it even simpler and to remove iontophoresis is now also possible, and this was, uh, instead of the ontophoresis, possible with the use of new penetration enhancer. So this, uh, after three years of research on riboflavin diffusion, we, ha we have found an uh, alternative, and from now on also ap on cross-linking is possible also at this lit lamp, and also in this, such in this case, it was a, a bilateral ap on cross-linking at this lit lamp. Well, so we spoke about thin corners, now it's possible. We spoke about doing Dresden protocol as effective as, res, uh, as 30 minutes, but in a much shorter time. And we spoke about EPI-ON. So all of those uh, cross-linking procedures, we thought before, okay, what's the purpose for cross-linking? It's to stabilize the cornea. And now it comes uh, uh, to a, another method which we called PACE. So PACE is the second generation of customized cross-linking and that breaks uh, a, a paradigm. So a major paradigm was that improving vision with cross-linking would not be possible, or at least not our goal. 
the question here is whether the way we were thinking on all of those years is it still nowadays accurate. So here you see a standard cross-linking before the procedure. It's a, just a, a, an example and after cross-linking. So before we, we, we were satisfied with if we didn't see any changes because we could stabilize the keratoconus. So a stable topograph with standard cross-linking was our goal. On the other hand, we would also not expect increase of vision. Then in 2016 came uh, the first generation of uh, customized cross-linking that was published by Tel Seiler Jr. And uh, at that time, you could see changes in the topography. So before and after, and this difference on the topography. So the topography got better. And how did they do this? So this is the back surface. On, at that time, they create gradients. So higher fluences, so higher energy, where the cornea was uh, more elevated. So 10 joules on this area, a bit further, a little bit less, and even less. And the clear advantage of the customized cross-linking is that it could not only stabilize the keratoconus, but also improve the topography. And of course, improve the topography without removing tissue. We, we, we could do this using PRK or other methods, but here in customized cross-linking without removing any tissue. The big disadvantage on this is that we needed a very large and expensive equipment to do so. So uh, uh, Hafezi, Shadi is here, me, Francesco, Leo, and other colleagues, we were speaking, and we had some meetings about how to improve this with the PACE. And PACE means PTK-assisted, customized, epi-on cross-linking, and is what we call the second generation of the customized cross-linking. What could we achieve with this? Well, what we saw is the anterior surface much more regular and even more than before with the first generation and still without removing the tissue. So I will show you some examples uh, how we achieved this and this could only be achieved using this combination. So if you have already a, a, a laser, you only need the CI device and then of course uh, the anterior topography with the MS-39 and I'm sure most of you here in this room have it. So some cases I will show you. So the pre-operative data, uh, if I'm not wrong, 51 diopters uh, with this asymmetry inferior and the correct visual acuity of 0 0.4. Five months later, that's the result we achieved with uh, this localized, customized cross-linking and this is the amazing uh, differential pattern. So you see where the cornea was more curved that now we had a flattening and on the other way around. So there was a big regularization of those, this cornea. Another example, so here uh, 53 diopters, uh, 03 vision, visual acuity, and also uh, after only one month, we could see uh, such changes and such regularization. So uh, if we, it's around three, three diopters down and one up more or less, so four in total. And that's another case uh, that was recent. I saw the patient a few weeks ago and that's not a refractive surgery. That's not a laser. We did not remove any tissue. So that's only cross-linking. And when you look on the map difference, you see now it's much more regular. So it's uh, a very nice case in which here the differential map uh, showed us almost seven diopters of uh, regularization and that without any excimer laser. So how do we do it? So as a first step, we need to concentrate the energy where the cornea needs. So the first generation use such values, we use a bit more than those values. And then after this, we, need, we, we perform a PTK uh, and where we exactly do is matter of uh, our discussion right now. 
but we perform a PTK and then apply the penetration enhancers that I mentioned before that we use for the AP on, so that we have riboflavin in the AP off area and also in the AP on area. So representing this in an image, you can see uh, an example would be this AP on and AP off area. When we apply the riboflavin, we create a gradient of riboflavin that's higher on the desired area and lower on the periphery, and that's how we achieve that flattening. So then, uh, a first cross-linking is done using high fluence pulsed uh, with the CI device, so it's kind of a mixture of the AP on with AP off, and then a second cross-linking is done as a second step uh, with a higher and specific settings to increase efficacy on this specific point. So in summary, we do two cross-linking, one on, on the entire cornea and a second one to increase specifically at one point the gradient uh, effect. With this, as I show you, we saw massive, uh, imp massive improvement and as I said, there was no tissue removal. And if you need, of course, we can always do a wavefront PRK afterwards. So those are the, we, the case we saw before. So the news now this year uh, is not only the technique, but now from, from now on the CI device can be also be coupled with the Schwind Amaris device. And you can see here how easy it is to use them together. So they will be available for, for the ones that have the Schwind laser platform or the users. And we just adapt easily to the laser. And of course, the same one can be used at this lead lamp. So as a final message, uh, cross-linking has become a multi-phase technique. Uh, cross-linking can be performing in an operating room, combining the or not with excimer laser, but also at this lead lamp. And as I said, one size does not fit all. We have to think like we are used to think with cataract surgery, for example. So for every single patient, we should adapt our method. There are patients that need different methods than the others. And individualized cross-linking with the SUB400 protocol, customized cross-linking with PACE cross-linking, and ap on cross-linking at this lead lamp are changing paradigms and are the future of cross-linking. So the last message I'd just like to invite you all for our Congress in Zurich, uh, the cross-linking experts meeting December 8 to 10 in Zurich, Switzerland. With this, I'd like to thank you very much for the attention. Thank you.